Hi, I'm Carrick Butler. Welcome to Faith in the Morning. Something good is going to happen to you today, so let's get your day started with faith and encouragement. Let's get started with our daily affirmation. Say it with me. Say, I'm the salt of the earth. I'm the light of this world. Jesus said it, so I believe it. I'm a carrier of the glory of God. Today, I will experience the extreme goodness of God. Today, I will make myself available for God to show his goodness to others through me. Today, I am increasing in influence. Today, I will see the goodness of God in my life. Today, something good is going to happen to me, so I expect miracles. Amen. I have a wonderful interview for you today, so don't go anywhere. Today, I have the honor of interviewing Miss Ginger Ziegler. That's right. She's been on Faith in the Morning before, but I want to share this powerful interview with you. So open your heart. God's going to speak to you today. Ms. Ginger, thank you so much for being here and taking time out of your schedule to pour into us today. Well, I am so grateful for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. I think it's an honor that you and the Lord has given me. And I love to talk about prayer <laughs> because that's what I do. <laughs> awesome. Uh, one of the things I want to focus on today, because we have people who are watching that, you know, they've been in the faith for a long time. They've learned about prayer. But we also have some people who are watching that this is the first time them hearing the message of faith and how to use their faith in the prayer life. So we have this broad spectrum of people who listen and tune in. But one of the things that's wonderful about prayer is that we can actually pray with specifics. Yeah. Can you share about that? Well, I learned how to do this a long time ago, decades ago. In 1969, I've told this story before. Um, I was doing my daily Bible reading and in Matthew 6, verse 6, I was just reading the scripture and I read it and it said, go in your secret prayer closet, pray to your father and he'll see you in secret and then he'll reward you openly. And I thought, wow, that's where I've been messing up. I'm not getting my prayers answered because I'm not doing like what he said. I got to find this secret place to go pray. <laughs> so I, it was crazy. You have to hear the whole story. But anyway, I started, that started a journey for me. And so then that was in 69. And then in 1971, the Lord graciously, I don't even know how it happened, but I was praying in my secret prayer closet and I ended up in heaven before his throne. So then my whole life began to change and I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I learned about Kenneth Hagin Sr. And then I really learned about prayer. And I started actually a prayer group on Tuesdays in 1971 and I've had prayer groups ever since. But I've learned more and more about the prophetic side and how to mix it with faith and how to, how to really have the confidence that he's actually hearing you. And where I always want to help people start with, I love face-to-face. -face. And so the way I got born again as a small child is I had a face-to-face -face vision relationship with the Lord Jesus. And then as my life went on, and even when I went to heaven that time, I had the face-to-face. -face. And so when I saw that scripture, I thought, wow, I need to get this face-to-face -face with my father and I learned how to pray and learn what to ask him for. Then he's going to answer those prayers. So faith began to build in my heart for that. So then I said, Lord, there must be secrets or there must be keys to being able to pray with confidence so that you know that when you pray, then you begin to show me Jeremiah 1. And I said, okay, Lord, you put your words in my mouth. And I knew when I would get his words in my mouth, if I prayed his word, then nobody was teaching me. I was just learning all this stuff by myself, just me and him in the closet. <laughs> okay. I got to tell you this part, <laughs> Pastor, this is too funny. When uh, After I went to heaven and came back, this lady from the CBN club, she said, well, you need to go and get Kenneth Hagin's books on every book he's got. So I went and got him. He said, and she said, read every one of them 15 times. I said, okay. So I can follow instructions. So I went and I got them. 
and we have, we live in this little bitty house and had one of those old timey pigtail lights comes down. We had one closet. I get in that closet, turn that little light on, get my Bible, get the Strong's Concordance, and get Kenneth Hagin Sr.'s books. And I was like, okay, exactly how do we do this? And I would, I would, we got 430, so I'd get everybody off and we had land and I had all kinds of responsibilities. And I'd get everybody off and get everything. Now, as soon as they're out the door, man, I'd be in that closet. I'd be in there all day long. And then I'd hear the kids come and I'd jump out of the closet. <laughs> and I, that's how I learned to pray. I spent time face to face with him. And I learned how to pray his word. And I didn't even realize what I was doing. Like I said, I only had his books that was mentoring me. And then, of course, we started knowing more and we went into different churches and we got involved in in faith churches and charismatic churches. And our life totally began to change after that. But if you just take a little time and not be childish, but be childlike, that's what I did with that Matthew 6. I wasn't childish. I was childlike. I thought, oh, I'm supposed to be praying in secret. Okay, that's what I'll do. <laughs> Teach me how to do that. And then the relationship, the father-child relationship began to grow between me and him, which, you know, Jesus, the way that he was able to do what he did in the River Jordan, the father's voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Do you realize those words took him all the way through the trials that he went through with Satan in the wilderness, brought him back out of that, and he had all those miracles, all the things that he did, went through all the stuff that he went through, the four Gospels, we can read it, because he was so like this with his relationship with his father. He said, I only do what I see the father do, and I only say what I hear the father say. And so he was rock solid. Sometimes he'd pray all night long before he'd go out and preach the next day. But when he'd go out and preach the next day, miracles were all over the place. So I began to see this father-child relationship was a major key, not just to getting God to answer our prayers, but getting a relationship so that I knew that I could go before his throne of grace and mercy in my hardest times, my hardest parts of my life, and he would hear what I was saying. He had compassion and mercy on me, and he would help me, and he would give me answers. Then I began to rely more on putting his words in my mouth, putting his words in my mouth. So different visions, different, I've had translations and different things has happened in my life, and I'm always saying, Jesus, if you put your words in my mouth, I know when I pray that, I will pray exactly your will. And when I pray your will, I will see the manifestation. And so I just want to encourage the people that are out there. It's so simple. It's not complicated. And it's not even hard to gain faith. It's out of relationship. It's not something we're trying to go to store somewhere and get something. It's just being with him and spending time with him. You find out what he thinks, how he feels. You find out about the Holy Spirit because he's major. He is major in helping you do all this stuff. And so that's kind of an introduction of how I did the book, The Hidden Faces. It's literally hidden faces, but it's in prophetic places because John 16, verse 13, Jesus said, I want you to know things. I want to reveal things to you. I want to show you things. I want to show you things that's coming down the pike. I want to show you the future things. And it's through the Holy Spirit of truth. And it takes a little bit of our time. And I just tell people, I say, hey, and, so, and this is how I started way back in the 70s. Instead of like taking an hour for my lunch time when I was working, I'd go in and I'd spend 30 minutes of it praying. I go find me a, a place somewhere and I'd eat my sandwich on the go, you know, because I was so hungry and so thirsty for the very presence of God. And then as that relationship developed, 
then I begin to see and know more. Just like Jesus said, I knew what to do. I prayed all night, but I knew what to do the next day. Does that, is that kind of answering your prayer? You just, you pull into, you come into a place to where you are just so hungry for God. And then he says, here, this is what I have for you. I got things I want to show you. I got things I want to teach you. I want to help you. And then you just start getting, I, I know maybe this is not a good word to use, but this is a word I use. You get a burden. You want to pray. You want to pray for the nation. You want to pray for people. You want to pray for um, pastors. You want to pray for prophets. You want to pray for people that need to be born again. You want, you just have, a, you would rather pray than eat. You'd rather pray than sleep because the desire to see God move in other people's life becomes so real and so open to you. Does that help you a little bit? <laughs> Am I saying it too much? No, it's perfect. Actually, can we take a moment and can you pray for people who are wanting to start this journey, who are just very new, but are starting the same place you started? Can you pray for them real quick? Oh, yes. Father, right now, Lord, you through your Holy Spirit, you, through the power of your son, Jesus Christ, through the power of his blood, everybody that's watching, make them, give them that hunger, give them that thirst. God, stir them up on the inside. Help them to believe that they can talk to you and you will answer Oh, it was so amazing, Jesus, when you stood there and you said, I know you always hear my prayers and you always answer. Help them believe. Give them the faith, the confidence that they can have a relationship with you like that, that they can pray and they can actually see things begin to manifest and change, not only in their own lives, but in the lives of people that they love and people. People they don't even know. People that they've never even seen. Lord, I ask you to draw them by your love. Draw them, oh Jesus, by your precious and powerful Holy Spirit into this deep, abiding relationship of love face to face, face to face, face to face desiring to pray, not to be seen, but only to be seen by you, Jesus, only to be seen by you, Heavenly Father, that that would suffice and that would satisfy all the longings on the inside of them, that that would be enough, no matter what's going on, that would be the very thing that they're just hungering and thirsting. You promised that you would fill us when we have that kind of hunger and that kind of thirst. Holy Spirit, I ask you to move by your power of love and truth right now. Pull those people in to the very heart of the Father God in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Amen. Wow. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Amen. That's part one of the interview. I'll share part two later. Make sure you visit Miss Ginger's website and you'll be able, you'll see the link below, you'll be able to get a copy of her new book. I have it with me right here. It's called Hidden Faces in Prophetic Places. Make sure you check it out. Have a wonderful day. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow so you don't miss our next devotional and our next interview. God bless.